Hi, folks. Welcome to Tuesday night. That means Murder Hobo Inc. goes between the roles, our talk show, if you will. Uh, once again, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, follow us on YouTube if you want. Uh, and I'm sure Blake is going to have another suggestion coming up soon. Uh, folks, we're glad to have you here uh, tonight. We got a pretty good show. We're going to have to go ahead and recap two different adventures, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about some role playing opportunities. Uh, just uh, kind of the mechanics of it all. Uh, we'll see how we do. Maybe we suck. Maybe we're really good. Uh, tell your friends, tell your family, follow us. Please, please, sir, will you follow us? Uh, we're going to get to the cast here in just a second. I'm going to point out that we have uploaded our any. Uh, submission. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Any Awards are always handed out at Gen Con, uh, usually on Friday night, uh, to much fanfare. And, uh, you know, we think, uh, you know, we got a pretty good thing there. Uh, anyway, I know I got a great cast, and let's get to them. Uh, on my screen, I'm going high left. Hallie, tell us about yourself. Hey everybody, I'm Hallie. Um, I'm a player and a DM and a content creator. I run the Terrible Party. We're at Terrible underscore party on Twitter. And I just today put up a link tree so all of our crap is linked in one place because I needed to be efficient. So you can find all of our stuff there. Uh, and if you're interested in getting involved with our stuff and with Murder Hobo, we are all going to be sharing a charity stream coming in March. So we're working on that right now. More to come for that. What's your group called again? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Small, terrible, and a dragonborn party. We're known as the STDs. There you go. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> give it up, right? Down below on my screen is Blake. Yeah, I'm Blake. Uh, and and you can follow me on Wattpad uh, if you're into One Direction fanfic. Uh, just search for uh, Little Girl One Direction and see what comes up. I'm I'm like number four and seven. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the FBI and the Secret Service are thanking you for that pitch, Blake. That should make it easier on them to find the people they're looking for. Last but certainly not least, our friend in the Great White North, Chris. Top I'm that one, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, I'm Chris. You can find me on Twitter at uh, ChrisWin83. Uh, I paint minis, play D&D &D online. That pretty much is it. And our producer was the first recipient of one of his things. I'm calling bullshit. I think it was staged. She got uh, his thing. But it, it is a very nice uh, uh, mini, and it's in her office. Um, let's go ahead and start off with our first topic. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, our group, sadly, none of these guys, uh, played in what we call Firebase Con. Uh, now, Chris, Halley, and Blake, uh, did you get the opportunity to see at least a little bit of it? I, I I think I mentioned I I I just started it uh, because I was trying to catch up because I had a heavily heavily intoxicated last week, so uh, I'm a, I haven't quite gotten to the juicy details yet. But yeah, <laughs> Allie and Chris, did you catch any of it? Sadly, no. I caught a few bits and pieces. I know there was a a cock ring involved. Um, and some other, <laughs> some other detail he lights on right into, that, that right into, especially juicy. Uh, hey, you didn't give your warning, Frank. <laughs> folks, gentlemen, mature audiences only. Yeah. It's just, if you haven't figured out, it needs to be mature audiences only. You're either new and welcome aboard, or you've been here a while and you haven't been paying attention. It. As long as you're following us, I really don't give a shit. Uh, and if the warning was too late, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're under 15, where's your owner? Uh, if, if you found that offensive, please go to Blake's suggested website. Uh, folks, Firebase Con was a uh, frontier fortress under siege. The PCs had just gone ahead and enacted a peace treaty between two neighboring countries, one of which was the Hill Dwarves. Uh, then they found out bad news. One of their gemstone mine fortress, uh, Saigon, Vietnam kind of shithole place uh, was under siege and they got to take hippogriffs over there. Uh, fortunately, Josh decided to do a flyover and he got their guide shot out of the sky, which was awesome. Um, but they went in and they had to face a variety of creatures and found a variety of treasures, which Chris has mentioned. 
<laughs> uh, but it uh, it was a pretty good adventure. They were successful, and they didn't die, despite the fact that they kept wanting to split the party on me. Uh, it was a nice challenge for me, and I always like that. Uh, Blake, you said you saw a few minutes of it. What did you think of uh, the initial stage? Yes, it was a very good first 10 minutes where they introduced <laughs> themselves and... <laughs> Uh, it's fine. He has to start coming up with new ways to communicate that to me because that, the old is not effective that's anymore. True. The private messaging system is awesome, but uh, as you're going to find out here, uh, abused a lot. Uh, folks, um, if you haven't caught Firebase uh, Con, uh, go see it. It's out there on Twitch and it's uh, already on our YouTube archive along with our other items. Uh, it was pretty fun. I will reiterate it is for mature audiences only. Uh, Ryan, Dylan, Thor, and Josh were in rare form. <laughs> uh, I don't know who gave them pop after eight o'clock, but they were wired. Uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is last Saturday's show. Uh, it was part of the campaign, so our regular viewers will know that Chris and Blake are uh, fifty percent of the campaign. Uh, it was uh, it's tentatively titled "Seeking Answers." Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Chris. Chris, how did you guys get to episode three? Thanks, Chris. <laughs> we appear to be having audio tech audio difficulties again. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me read my notes. Oh yeah, we had we had graduated. We got our little copper armbands, and we had. Uh, couple different options if i recall there was one where we could go to whitewood uh and dura or <laughs> footage but if i recall i think we went to andura did we not no you skipped andura uh andura was your homeland and kyle oh yes 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 yes, yes. We so you, you went to the grecian ruins to go see the oracle of delphi but it's not the oracle of delphi it's somebody else entirely and then yeah. uh, we, we got on we got on the horizon with Captain Tourette. <laughs> who, who I've got to say had one hell of an accent. I'm just going to say. Yeah. That. Oh, I know. I wonder who portrayed him so well. What was that? Kudos to that person. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm going to accept it. I mean, you know. Uh, Chris, more importantly, did anything strange happen? Uh, folks, spoiler alert. We're going to cover this. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want to hear it, uh, just mute us for a while and we'll give you the thumbs up and let you know you can unmute. Chris, uh, anything problematic occur when you were at the school? <laughs> at the school? Yeah. Well, I don't remember what happened at the school. Uh, like the first half of the stream, I'm not going to lie, is kind of a blur. The last <laughs> half, I remember a little bit better. <laughs> the beer was stronger than I remembered. <laughs> Chris did have some uh, technical difficulties as well. And so. that too. <laughs> and he had a couple Molsons. He had a couple big Molsons. Non Molsons. No, this Whatever. is my beer. <laughs> it was fun to watch him open it. Uh, I'll kick it over uh, to Blake then. Blake, uh, what did you morons do once you got back to your home of 10 years? Well, my intention was to go see the headmaster and then everyone decided to follow me while Kyle destroyed shit and then proceeded to uh, break apart some kind of multiplying butterfly type thing, which I was hoping to craft into a butterfly golem. No, you and that <laughs> dead frog. No, Well, you gave me back my dead frog. In effect, I, I'm much more pleased with what I got instead. Right. Uh, so Hallie, were you surprised at, the actions taken by the group in part one when they return. I was going to say, which part? Yes. <laughs> uh, we've, got a, we've got a long way to go. Are you surprised by any of the actions of the group? No. 
<laughs> I mean, let's just be honest now. But no, the first half, I enjoyed the setup, especially because like the headmaster's sick and you guys have to go figure out all this stuff that's happening. And it was just like, oh, we're going to graduate and go out in the world. And oh, shit. Now we're, well, we graduated. And I like the whole thing. No, look, we did. We graduated. We have our bands now. Um, no, it, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, <laughs> consequences happen. They're gonna have to. They're going to have to change the bands. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say they're gonna. It's gonna be yeah. a shackle. <laughs> uh, into something. Chris, in the second half, you guys kind of, you guys took an ocean journey, which uh, turned out a little bit uh, hazardous, especially since your captain, ca Captain t t t Shit Bitch, uh, Captain Tourette, uh, took you through the volcanic cloud. Uh, for you and Blake, uh, any concerns of getting blasted by the stones uh, before I started to send them at you? Well, we, we, we essentially were kind of trying to go on the outskirts of the volcanic cloud, was my understanding of the time. <laughs> that sound correct? Uh, that's what you guys were thinking. Captain yeah. Tourette just wanted to get a... Oh, okay. So when you were saying he, he's going straight for the... He was literally headed towards the middle of the island. He skirted the island pretty okay. close because okay. it was. Uh, who was it that nearly got knocked out? Was it? Uh, I I magic missile a boulder and that got like took like three to the face or something. Yeah, uh, and looked none the worse. Uh, but yeah, these guys ended up taking a boat ride to get to an area on the far side of the island. Uh, Hallie, did you get to watch the interaction between the three boat captains and these guys? I did, yes. Uh, thoughts uh, on how it played out and how it could have played out better? Um, I mean, this is not a strong diplomatic group, so... Touche. I mean, that's that's my tendency as a player is to, again, depending on the on the character, but typically to at least try something before everything hits the fan. Like um, kick the old lady to death in the skull. Like that, well, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> in a campaign, a little different. So yeah. I, will just, I will just leave it there because I, I wasn't completely surprised that nothing diplomatic was really attempted, but... Well, and there was. There but was, at, but it kind of, yeah. Yeah. At risk of giving away one of the, the early secrets, one player had been me messaging me about an approach to a scenario. Okay. Unfortunately, it did not work out the way they suspected it would, but it also didn't tip their hand to show their special secret. So uh, gotcha. there, there was an attempt... Uh, however, it was thwarted by the environment, I'll say. Uh, now, Chris, uh, I think you were out during the selection process, weren't you? You were you were offline? We, yeah, we had to give him a recap, basically, once we were already on board the ship. <laughs> yeah, so uh, had it been up to you, noting that you could have gone back to your homeland, uh, which you... Where there, where there was war. Where there was war, uh, with the location Ernie came from... Uh, also, there is hostilities between your race and Kyle's race. Uh, would you have still wanted to go back to your homeland? Um, as my character, yes. Okay. Um, they typically always want to be flying, don't really care for things that don't fly, and, and so on and so forth, look down kind of or feel bad. Or, or feel uh, weighted down by? <laughs> in some cases, yes. Um, but in in the the retrospect of not being a d bag to you, I'm I'm not really. Chris, you're watching the show apparently because that's <laughs> kind of a precursor. Um, because yeah, if if I played him all the way through and through, I would have just been like, all right, bye. <laughs> see you later i would have flew off and left them there i'm a hero uh, bitches yeah. with nowhere to perch on your six days flight <laughs> yeah no kidding he would have become a pelican um but you know that's kind of interesting because one of the reasons i put andura in there was in the campaign world right now we have seven continents and that's going to play out very specifically later on 
but I wanted to throw one of your homelands at you guys just to see if you do that. And it was a roll of the die, and it came up as Andura for, and which is you and Kyle. Uh, now, um, Blake, what did you think? I think it, you made the final selection, didn't you? Uh, no, it was uh, <laughs> the, the, they. Uh, Ernie was the one who came up with going chasing the Pegasi. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because there's a side quest where uh, wild Pegasi are attacking a town. Uh, thank you, random generator. Yeah. Uh, but that's but, that's from but the rumor I, table, though. Just yeah. saying. But uh, I was uh, the one the the where I had selected it was uh, as a player and as a as a character who you know playing an occult character. I kind of had perceived that oh, there's probably a coven forming somewhere in there, and I tried to dissuade the party from pursuing that. Okay, and that's that's reasonable. Uh, Hallie is a DM. Uh, do you think giving them a homeland is a good choice or a bad choice? Should I have made it three homelands to let them fight it out amongst themselves? I, I wouldn't have gone back to my homeland. Why not? I don't have any ties to those people. That's true. It has been 10 years, but Chris has a uh, limited life expectancy being an Aarakocra. And you live only 20 years? The bird people do about, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, you're going to have to find some magic shit, otherwise you're going to die about midway well, through the campaign. I'm only five years old. Well, <laughs> well you've, been, academy. You, you've been at the academy for 10. You're 15, dude. Hey, Grandpa, yep. you're going to die. Yeah, get out there. <laughs> yeah. So, Hallie, what do you think? Uh, give them all three homelands or give them no homelands whatsoever? Or I give them one. It's almost asked and answered, at least for me, from what Blake had said, because it, it, you know, some of it ties to backstory and character inclinations and those things that the player is thinking about that maybe they don't even voice in the backstory sometimes, but it's then it pops up and you're like, oh yeah, shit, by the way, I don't have any ties to those motherfuckers. Um, it, yeah, it, it's all based, at least for me, on the group. My group, their backstories are extreme, especially their homelands, because one is exiled extremely important to the choices that they make and the things that I give them to work with in the campaign. Now, with that being said, quite honestly, if one of you had been exiled, I know Ernie was, he says he was kidnapped, but he was an orphan. Um, but had there been an exile, I, I, I think I would have almost pushed the most, the best choice of solving this problem is in the exile yeah. land and just throwing it at him. Um, but yeah, it that creates instant tension. Oh yeah. Yeah. And conflict. Yeah. Now those four can know how I feel every time I deal with them. So. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think? Conflict and tension. <laughs> now, what did you guys think of your aquatic encounters with the risk of getting thrown overboard? I, I did go overboard at one point, mm -hmm. which I was not particularly concerned about. Chris, I'm a bird. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> and, and I just and, fly away, man. <laughs> yeah, and Blake plays an Eric Cocker too. Uh, but yeah, the Eric Cocker are just, I got to be honest, they're just a giant pain in the ass because <laughs> you, you, you can evade so quickly uh, that it really takes some of the punch out of some things. Uh, but for purposes of the aquatic, uh, like Blake pointed out, you aren't going to go six days, dude. You're going to have to land no, on no. a giant shark yeah. your ass. Um, so, um, but with the marrow, especially the aquatic ogres were the main adversary there. Uh, we I, were the I was, main adversary. Well, yeah. You, well, it turned <laughs> out that you guys were the main adversary, but uh, I, I really, I, I think I did an okay job and, and I want an honest opinion as I always do. What, what could I have done differently to build a little bit more tension in that? Uh, start with Hallie, go to Chris, and then go to Blake. Oh, man. I'm trying to remember, and I, you have to forgive me because I was trying to watch it and do other things. Was there a threat, an active threat to the boat? <laughs> yes. The boat kept getting like, rocked. Yeah, uh, but capsizing? Not uh, – that probably should have been – 
uh, punctuated that, better, okay. but I don't think I did. I, I asked about it a couple times, and it was always okay. told, no, it's not actually going, like, he's not You're pulling not hard enough to tip the okay. bow. Yeah, because you everyone's are going to go instantly so. over boat. Okay. I think that, that for me, would have been the one thing, because the... the and I, I think I've mentioned this before. That's why water levels are so scary. Because unless you're a Triton, what the fuck you gonna do underwater? Your speed is half. There's all kinds of dangers under there. And if you can't, you can only breathe for so long or hold your breath for so long. So getting dumped in the water instantly changes the entire landscape of an encounter. Agree. Chris? Um, Because I know you love antiquity. No matter how many times we visit it, Blake... <laughs> I like it. It was I like, fun. I like it too, uh, honestly. <clears throat> um, I <clears throat> you you can always add more to it, um, whether or not it needed more. I, I'm not going to say needed more. Uh, for me, though, it's from my point of view, being an air cocker, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I try, like, I try to not have it have them fly as much as possible to not to not be that douche but in certain cases where it's like i could die well i'm gonna fly and take my chances (laughs) i don't want to (laughs) die oh yeah no i i agree uh and there were no missile attacks aside from the volcanic rock being plunged at you so you were fairly safe uh blake i'm like uh, i was really concerned with if like when there were magma boulders coming at the ship i'm like if this ship is actually like hit <laughs> yeah like when you said oh it just kind of hits the water around it i'm like oh okay well we're I, I was kind of getting the impression that it was going to be that we were quote unquote railroaded into making it to the other side at that point because i was fully expecting you to literally sink the ship and we had to go back to that island that was now filled with magma uh the dice giveth and the dice taketh away the magma rocks never successfully hit the boat i had a really shitty string of rolls so uh i wasn't ruling it out uh i know some people uh take issue with uh oh you're uh uh, on an abandoned island or you're marooned or you're shipwrecked um i happen to like that scenario i mean that is a very easy scenario to dm because it's usually a sandbox and it just involves figure out what kind of resources you have and how to get off the island Uh, you have have magma and time yeah Uh, and and not much of it (laughs) maybe the satyrs would have helped you out so uh we wrapped it up with you guys finally reaching landfall and again the curse of the aracocra caught me because i had uh some crocodiles right at the shoreline to go ahead and they Thank you for those frank you're welcome uh yes <laughs> you, you skinned them successfully uh but I, those were actually very easy encounters uh it was just more for me to kind of uh nick and pick your hit points off and your spells uh but with the aracocra and two levitators i kind of got screwed uh but that brings us to the major question of the scenario folks if you haven't watched it and you don't want to know what happened you need to mute us right now because i am gonna come uncorked at these guys uh the question i have muted what the hell were you guys thinking killing the boat captain I, I yeah, mean, that's what I thought. <laughs> no, no, no. I, like honestly, for once, I, I, you know, it was like I told you. I, I told him my secret. That's why I wanted to go and talk to him. I wanted to give him stories to tell. I, I, I actually liked the guy. I, and you know, when it came time to kill the crew, and you know, the the kind of running joke that you, you're talking, you know, you keep talking about how ch- private chat, uh, the private chat that we were having with each other was a lot of. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had our own ship so we could go wherever the fuck we wanted, whenever Jesus we wanted? <laughs> okay. That that makes that makes a little bit more sense. So, so that that was kind of the motivation behind it. But then to literally firebomb the ship too, I was kind of I was kind of taken by surprise by that. Yeah. Now I can't remember. Did we explain in the show what Kyle was doing, Hallie? Do you remember? Very, that? very, very poorly. 
Okay. Yeah, I admit to some loss of the of the narrative at that point because I was just kind of like, I, I can make assumptions, but yeah, essentially, uh, uh, and I, I knew we didn't cover it very well. I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw it the same way I did. Kyle had been busy for two days drilling small holes into the bottom of the boat and filling it with wax so that in a day or so, uh, Captain Tourette's boat would sink on its own. So my, I guess my envisioning of the campaign being a heroic struggle, good versus evil, is probably taking a pretty dark turn because I've got a flame-throwing druid burning bushes and a group of pirates killing people. Rivers so, of gore, rivers of gore. I, I just uh, that one that one honestly did take me off my mark. So uh, I, I am now formulating on alternative avenues for the campaign, which is nice uh, because we're still early enough that uh, changes can be made. Uh, I, I will credit you guys. Did not see that coming. Did I, not. I, I liked it though, because it, it, it's kind of, Kyle briefly touched on it too. It's, it's him leveling up in Barbarian. It's him becoming more and more reckless and more and more unpredictable. Yeah, you guys are third fucking level. <laughs> Compared to one, that's 300 times more. Uh, I suppose. Um, Hallie, what was your impression on them killing the crew? I fully admit to not understanding the motivations. Uh, learning about the private chat just helped me a lot. Okay, because even then... I mean, and, and and I'm not one to harp on alignment, but as low-level adventurers who just basically got out of a 10-year prison sentence, I don't know that you want to go back so quickly. Well, if we're considering it a prison sentence, we would be rebelling. Mm, that's that's a good point, Chris. Uh, are we? Should I anticipate more chaotic, neutral, evil-ish shit? Uh, noting that only 50% of you are here. Um, not gonna lie, my knees just went along with it. <laughs> just like, oh, okay, well, this is what we're doing. Fun. All right, I guess this is what we're doing. That's how the Nazis won. Almost won. <laughs> well, no, no, that was that was my thinking too. I had my I had my back to what was going on, and I just saw them attacking. So I'm like, oh, I guess some. I guess one of them pulled a crossbow on me. Magic missile. Bullshit. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Big question for you two. From this point on, how do you think I should interpret the campaign? Should I go with, okay, we're going to do a chaotic neutral kind of thing, uh, or this was, okay, maybe trying to steal this dude's boat was a bad idea kind of thing? Uh, I'm going to continue to be chaotic neutral. You you can probably figure that out. Chris? I I'm probably just going to follow along in most situations, um, try to fit in kind of situation. Um, I, I mean, I didn't anticipate killing anybody. I, I didn't, I figured, okay, we're off the boat. Um, we screwed them over. They'll probably come back at some point to bite us in the ass along, make, make for a good story, you know? And then I'm guessing that's what Kyle and, and, and um, Ernie they, Ernie, yes. I don't know. I was thinking Eddie, but I'm like, that's not his name. Uh, <laughs> Eddie was meatloaf in Rocky Horror. Nice. Hey. And uh, I guess that's what they thought and figured, well, it is Murder Hobo Inc., so let's murder Hobo some some shit. One of the things that uh, you folks, the viewers, missed was, uh, we touched briefly on this before we went live, uh, one of the things Ernie posted in chat was a nice little uh, GIF or JPEG that said, no witnesses, no crime. So uh, this uh, this is going to take some retooling on my part. Well, Allie, you I believe he even vocalized at some point that, hey, now no one no one knows where we no went. No one knows, yeah. He, uh, which, yeah, okay, just, yeah, that did cover your tracks. So, uh, Hallie is a fellow DM. Uh, what do you think? Which direction would you go with these guys? 
the, you know, consequences are the first thing that come to mind. I don't know if that means other captains come after them in retribution. I don't know if Captain Tourette was part of a larger group of pirates who would seek blood for blood. Well, he was a merchant. Kind of he was an innocent merchant. And there are, he was, there, are uh-huh. no, there are no carrier pigeons to tell the tale. But that's what I that's what, how I would play it. Yeah. Is that well maybe he wasn't quite and would surprise the hell out of them with like, oh by the way, you get 50 pirate vessels on your ass. Whoops. Um, because I am a big believer in consequences. So burn them all. Yeah, one oh, of them maybe turn him into Davy Jones that each one of those marks was a hundred <laughs> years old. There you go. <laughs> one one of the clever items was captain Tourette was the third of three ships to leave so nobody really knows if these yahoos actually got on board his ship at all so they have actually covered their tracks extensively well uh ain't no fbi investigation gonna catch these boys because there's uh debris on the rocks um and that's I, I I would like to severely punish them, but right now I don't have a case. We're on uh, landfall. There could be a watchtower. <laughs> uh, nope, uh, that has already <laughs> been decided. That uh, and you guys will find that out once you climb the cliff. Um, there ain't no lighthouse. There ain't For those no of you unsure, we don't know what he has planned ahead of time. <laughs> that is true. Uh, this is a very fluid setup right now, which is is nice because. When the surprises come out, uh, Hallie might send uh, the East India Company out after you. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I am a firm believer in consequences. I just don't know how I can justify it yet. I will figure out a way. Uh, but sadly, <laughs> these guys got dumped in a remote area. Um, so I can't. I, the, the nice thing is, I know they will repeat themselves. Um, So if you haven't seen it, uh, we uploaded it to YouTube uh, today. It's still out on Twitch. Twitch must love us because Twitch isn't deleting any of our stuff, even though we are not affiliate status yet. If you have friends, uh, send them our way so we can hit affiliate status. Let's move on to our third topic, and that's role playing. we all, I mean, that's that's why most of us play the game. Uh, some of us do metagaming and just like crunching the numbers. Uh, but a lot of us like to uh, do the moose and squirrel fake. Uh, I enjoy being a little girl. I feel accent. pretty. Yeah. Uh, Chris likes to fly around. Hallie likes to pretend that she's some nice paladin lady when she's crushing a little old lady's skull in because she yaps all the time and apparently according to her people she kills them when she's the constantly demon. so uh for you three when you guys are playing uh murder hobo inc you guys all have your characters uh whether it's the campaign or the one shots you guys have your favorite characters how do you get in the mindset of i am the aarakocra i am um the gift barbarian i am the little girl uh chris uh well for the eric Hawker, since i didn't know much about them kind of went with a let's pick a random character and go with it try something new so i stay away from playing things that i'm that i've already played or more comfortable with playing uh then i went and found the uh you can download it online through wizards for free anyways uh the elemental evil book which has all the stuff for the air cocker in it so i read through that a little bit kind of got an idea of how they are then was like okay so they enjoy flying a lot which will be kind of not fair to frank so let's kind of omit that little bit of fact i know they're supposed to fly a lot uh there's a lot of other things that would make them kind of like not campaign friendly so to speak uh they tend to not like people who don't fly uh but in this case given the 10-year history and all that stuff i just kind of figure you know these things would kind of not be grew out of them or, or so on and so forth uh kind of not playing the race so to speak the way it should be but playing the the the, the cleric side a little bit better good uh hallie um, 
I like the outlier characters. That's just kind of how, and I mean, character as race class combo, as background, all of that kind of, which is where Janara, the Gith Zerai barbarian came from, because as soon, I was familiar with Gith from previous editions of uh, Dun Dungeons and Dragons, but you know, now they've been put into Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes and you can play them as a race. And I was like, yeah, they look like goth, cool soldier people. I'm fine with that. And, but also part of it being that I, you know, a lot of the times I play either chaotic good or chaotic neutral characters and she's very much a lawful neutral soldier type. So it challenges me to do something like Chris had said, to do something a little different that I wasn't used to. So just to get out of your comfort zone. Basically, yeah, I just want to try something different. Okay. Blake, same question. Wrap it up on how you get in the mindset. Well, you know, I, I, it's very difficult for me to get inside of a little girl. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, okay. Um, but sort of so, still shut you down, so you must be safe still. Yeah. But no, but otherwise, like uh, one of one of the favorite one of the favorite characters that I played was the Christmas show. The uh, what? It was the Christmas show. Uh, Hallie uh, was there for that as well when we were doing the. Uh, it was okay. Guess guess everyone has to die. Oh, the Eeyore yeah. character. Yes. But uh, it is you know I kind I kind of pick a concept like. Uh, right now, I, I think I sent you pictures. I'm in visual when I'm. I don't look at any of your pictures, uh, FBI. Anymore, anymore, I did. Go ahead and intercept those. Those are not opened. <laughs> but no, uh, like right now, uh, when I when I was creating the concept of Perpetua, I was literally thinking Annie from League of Legends, like huh? this little just like demon like possessed little shit that's just always carrying around a teddy bear that she is convinced is real and talks to and is, you know, so I was trying to just kind of, I, I pull inspiration from things that I already know because I don't have a personality of my own. I can only mirror other people's. That's a symptom of psychopathy. <laughs> I was thinking you were the little girl that uh, uh, got shot in Men in Black. The oh. cardboard cutout. Because yeah. <laughs> there's some shit going down here. That's how I, whenever you play Perpetua, I'm like, some shit's going to go down here. And she does not look right. So, but, but no, I, I try and find, you know, because I, I, again, I mentioned this one of the early episodes of this. Uh, Prudence is very much my high school English teacher. Uh, it's, it's just kind of taking the most. It, it's like it's like doing drag. If anyone else can relate to that, you take the most exaggerated characteristics of something and just run with it. Yeah, I like to do that as a DM when I use, but I use pop culture. Oh, I've uh, never seen you in drag as a DM, Frank. Oh well, that's because I won't send the pictures here. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I, I always like to use pop culture references. The only downfall of that is uh, unless you're like Blake and you grew up on Nick at Night, a lot of those just do not get snagged uh well they, I, they they're 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 not timeless well i i like foghorn leghorn a lot um i used him as an npc he was foghorn meth horn and uh he was a colonel sanders kind of dude that was running a silver mine and he was he ended up Sadly, he passed when a ballista bolt hit him in the head. Uh, but he was great while he lasted. Because <laughs> he said, no, I say, boy, I say, you need to go into that mine. And I say, you need to go ahead and do that. Uh, and he was always, I mean, being old, he was always a very memorable character. Somebody easy to relate to. Uh, but when I've been to conventions and I've played with uh, individuals, I, I think, younger than you three, uh, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. um, but I did have, uh, I used um, one character and it was, um, ah, crap, Justin Bieber. Uh, he was a criminal. Uh, and I thought, okay, if I'm going to use Justin, because I took his face and I put it on a wanted poster and things like that. And I thought, okay, if we're going to go after this guy, how should I play him? And I kind of maybe 180 or maybe 90 degree because i don't know justin bieber at all but i thought what if he is so completely apologetic for his crimes 
that he just slathers it on with the apologies. And I think my mother-in-law was ready to kill him by the end of it because they were assigned to go pick him up and bring him back and bringing him back involved all the problems. Uh, but using for, for the mindset for that one, it was just, you know, you're just doing your job and I'm sorry that I had to lead you to this and blah, 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 blah. And I just laid it on really thick and it has the, I guess, panache of really pissing people off. Um, and that's why my NPCs are always assholes because I like to get a rise out of you guys. And I pretty much want you to, uh, take Liberty and punch the crap out of them. Well, you're, you're devil's advocate too. That's true. true. Uh, yeah. Wait till I give you guys a ring of three wishes again. So yeah, yeah. you guys will be screwed. Uh, what about rolling with situations? I try, uh, no matter what it is, campaign or one shots, I always like to try and figure out something that will bother your character. How do, do you guys appreciate that from a standpoint to, to go for character development or growth? Or do you just think I'm wasting my time? Uh, we'll start with Blake this time and go backwards. Personally, I, yeah, I, I do, especially in something like a campaign setting where you're Incur not, not encouraging, but where you're more likely to be invested in the character and your, uh, you know, role playing aspect. Even for even for low role low RP groups, role playing in general is a higher uh, motivating factor and a higher influencer. So something that's going to mess with the character is great. Plus. I like it when you think something's going to mess with the character and you're wrong. Correct. Because you don't know what that character is in my head. Miss the motivation. Chris, same question. This is primarily for new DMs or low experience DMs. Because I'm old. I've already made up my mind. Um, myself, I'm still a fairly new dm so it's not really something i've gotten around to using um but definitely uh, a good thing to have um whether or not your players pick up on it at times or realize that's what you're trying to do that's a whole different story uh but it's always fun i mean it adds depth dimension all that fun stuff hallie uh viewpoint as a player viewpoint as a dm viewpoint as a dm just from standing in the campaign that we're at you know a year and a half in with the um the, the std party that it's it's one of the those things party. where yeah you heard me i said that on purpose yeah. yeah you're welcome um it's like a vaccine party but otherwise uh the whole thing with my group especially because i've got one who's a warlock who had a pact i've got one who's a cleric who had an you know had a god it's like what happens if i just fucking wreck that just in the course and, and not to be malevolent but in the course of a larger storyline to make them question this thing that they've known forever. you know forever or as with the warlock as an act of vengeance because he lost his fellow soldiers in a dragon attack is that the path they should be on so as a dm it makes a lot of sense story-wise because I'm not trying to dig the knife in, but I am trying to make them expand that initial, you know, two paragraph backstory and see what they do with it. And that's where I've been surprised the most. But well, and, and even just from an aspect, there are people at that table for various reasons. That's a good way of incorporating something that's not, okay, uh, move from point to point where we hit some shit each time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my entire campaign was built on their backstories and bringing them together as a party on an adventure, which of course is what most parties do. You know, you meet in the tavern, you go and you fight some shit and you kill some shit and you get some gold and then you hit level five and level 10 and suddenly the stakes are a hell of a lot bigger. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool now. I got cool stuff. Don't kill me. Right. Don't kill me. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I like that. That is that. That fits. And Blake's absolutely correct. If you've got somebody who's a bean counter, it's like, I want the most amount of XP that I can get. And that's all I want to do. I just want to kill. That's shit. why I don't use XP. Right. Ah, nice. I don't. Uh, but if you like, if you just want to get immersed in your character, and that's something uh, that Hallie and the other ladies brought up 
Tuesday, uh, I think it was after the show. Yes. Uh, Cause we were discussing how about a scenario where there's very low combat mm -hmm. and high RP. And I, I do that with town adventures. Uh, I, I like it. Um, the Doge, which I always mention, uh, had a lot of RP in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really like that. And uh, I'm currently finishing up a scenario for them uh, to see how they do. Uh, and it's, go get me a pair of boots that I had made. And it's going to be Jesus. first level. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like that aspect, especially if if I had four players and all they want to do is accents and character development, uh, I can throw a horde of orcs at them and they are just not going to have fun. And that is not conducive to the game environment. So if you're a new DM, a starting DM, and you're just trying to figure it out, ask your players and be blunt about it. Just I flat out. What do you guys want to see happen? And I routinely hit these guys. Uh, I'm always doing self-checks on it. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What do you want to see? Tell me what you want, and we'll move towards it. Because when I'm seeing smiles on these guys' faces, that makes me smile. Because they're having fun. I'm doing a good job. I'm having fun. So new DMs and inexperienced DMs, ask your players. Uh, because no matter what the rule book says, it is a group effort. Just like Murder Hobo Inc., uh, we've got 18 cast members, I think. Uh -huh. uh, each and every one of them uh, is a contributor. They all bring something to the table. Uh, so ask your players on that. Uh, I, I would like to chime in, though. Uh -huh. If you have a lot of people that are very interested in role playing, be mindful of your format. Because if everyone there is there for role play, then you're just going to end up like a bunch of shitheads like me trying to talk over each other. True, uh, which is not good for the online session, uh, especially Hallie runs a group and nobody's in the same nation, for God's sake. So, you know, it, <laughs> it makes it, it a little complicated, just a yeah, little bit. It can get a little hairy, but if you're uh, around the table at your friends, whoo, boy, you best get some uh, blinders and earmuffs because it's just going to be yakety sacks all over there. Um, but, you know, that's part of the fun. I mean, you're here. Four of us friends having a good time hanging out. That, that's what we're there for. Uh, some of us like to kill, like Hallie almost killed her cat that time, you know. <laughs> Playing pussy. Uh, Leave me alone. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, uh, campaign, four players, two players uh, tend to be very animated in their role play. Uh, Blake always likes the big stage. And Kyle loves to stutter at, for, as uh, Dewey. Um, Chris and Ernie, not so much. Uh, they do a little bit. Pluses and minuses of throwing it all out on the table and making this the next Sound of Music, which is the best goddamn movie of all time ever, ever. So what do you think? Yay or nay, making it a big stage production. Uh, Hallie, this time. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still like entirely following. So do, do, do you like making your character uh, heavy accent, a lot of detail, know. stuff like that? I'm sorry, I, I didn't okay. explain that very well. I wrote okay. it down even worse. As, as sometime who, as someone who is not good at accents, I have about three that I can consistently do, and even then, they kind of all bleed together. They I all sound Russian yeah. for some weird reason. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry to you because Star Wars yeah, character. Damn it. <laughs> I watched too much Rocky and Bullwinkle as a kid, apparently. Um, and it's it's one of those things where it, it, it you can you do what's within your abilities. And I say that as a DM, and I say that as a player. I think actions literally speak louder than words sometimes. So if you stick to the character or how you envision them how you say it in what accent you get dressed. I don't give a fuck what you want. You, if that's your thing, that is your thing. And I am here for it, but we're not all Matt Mercer. Right. Not even fucking close. So yeah, we do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we shouldn't be, uh, no new players, new DMS. 
don't be like Matt Mercer. Don't be like us. Be like yourself. Uh, don't, and don't expect that. I saw that argument. I was like, don't, yeah, that big, please uh, don't that have big, that. Yeah. Don't have that anticipation. It is what it is. It's entertainment. Yeah. And if you craft it to yourself and the others at your table, you're going to be much more happy than if you're, oh, I, I'm going to do this campaign or that campaign. Screw Ex that. You know? Expectations are prerequisites for for disappointment. Disappointment and failure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, make it your own. You know, you can still play in his campaign world. You could you can do our campaign world. You can do uh, the STD campaign world. It doesn't matter. Make the adventures your own. Uh, you touched on it, Hallie. Uh, three and four. So. And I, I needed to do a better job of including this, along with the <laughs> accents, describing the actions that you were taking rather than, you know what, I'm going to try and hit them. I'm throwing my 20. Does a 17 hit? Blah, 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 blah. How big is it for the general table, in your opinion, uh, for, well, I'm going to use my short sword. I'm, I'm going to unsheathe the mighty Keldor, the short sword, and slash at my enemies, blah, 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 blah you know, a la uh, big production. Sure. At least for us, we sit in the middle ground. Um, I was not big on high fantasy as a kid. That made me kind of roll my eyes a lot of the time as I'm going to, with the hammer of blah, 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 that's good for you. Okay. But it depends, again, it depends on play style for us. Like I said, with middle ground with us, yeah, you hit him. Oh, you rolled a natural 20 and you hit that goblin in the eye or you hit him with a natural 20. Yeah. You hit him right through the eye cavity. You most definitely did that. I'd be like, and he falls over, you know? So there's some, but I think especially when you're describing detail during combat, some people relish in that. Sometimes I get so caught up in trying to crunch those numbers and trying to just maneuver and handle what's going on on the map that I lose that thread sometimes. So it just depends on how well you multitask. Fair enough. Chris, same question. Um, I can do voices. I just don't have the, uh, what could you call it, testicular fortitude to do it. Um, like the eyeballs I are a, the size of grapefruit, sir. <laughs> Um, no, I, I mean, I can do it. I just, I don't know. I just don't. Um, That's fine. Uh, as far as describing, I, I don't mind it. Like Hallie, it's, you know, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Uh, it's not that I don't want to do it. I'm just not, me, myself, I'm not super familiar with the whole fantasy world and everything. So I don't have as much knowledge to bring to the table, like the name of a sword. Yeah, no. I know the Cape of Montebank. That's that's about one of the only things I know in D and D and gloves of snare uh, ensnaring, but you know, like I get sort of caught up and like you see, uh, for example, Marisha sometimes in in when they get into some pretty intense role or combat, she kind of gets flustered and forgets what's going on and doesn't know what to do and is trying to figure it all out very 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 quickly. Yeah, I get like that sometimes. So yeah. I forget about all that descriptiveness that you should probably be doing to an extent anyways. Um, and then just like, yeah, I got to roll the dice and you, I get all jambled. It happens. You're into it so much that you forget everything else. No, that's right. Especially when you're at higher levels and you're trying to calculate, well, I need to do this, but then I get my bonus action. I should do this. And then there's this. And, and that's that gives you that. that. And yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're doing this one shot where you're not entirely familiar with right. your character. Yeah. Right. Blake, I, I think I know the answer to this one, but I know the world is your stage. So same question to you. Uh, well, aside from the fact that apparently my balls are so big, I should be seeing a doctor. Um, uh, even just one of the things, just, just we'll just, say anything, folks. Fucking anything comes out of his mouth. Anything, anything. But, but one of the things. In. Going, <laughs> oh, good. We're going to hit the rabbit hole again. Oh boy. <laughs> to this most recent episode, like just talking about you know flavor and that kind of stuff. One of the things that I'm so glad you actually let me get away with, because it would have made sense for my character to do it, is. I said, I want to run up there and I want to twist the dagger. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's like, you know, just instead of like, okay, you know, okay, roll dice. Okay. I do seven, da seven damage. I'm like, I wanted to, I'm like, that was, it wasn't anything excessive. It wasn't anything to role play. It was just, 
you know what, that's a creative way of using something like that, that my character would totally definitely be into mm -hmm. that. I'm like, it was, you know, and I don't, I'm not naming my daggers. It's not, you know, the dagger of clitorectomies or, you know. The I dagger of sun and darkness. Yeah. No, May it's to always be bound by the forces of my God. <laughs> the world is my stage. But, but again, that's something that I'm, I'm, you know, if, if you would have had your reasons for not wanting me to do that, I would have gone along with it. But I liked it, it. under the circumstances, that's kind of just creative uses of the standard, you know, bread and butter. Yeah, I, I often uh, I watch you guys and, and I love all of your styles because they're all distinctly unique for the most part. Uh, and I unfortunately don't get to play a lot anymore. And I think back to the days, you know, when there were 12 channels and I was the remote control and I'm 100 years old, blah, 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 blah. And I-, I Any more stories about the Great War, Grandpa? Well, I was going uphill both ways in snow to get to school. Uh, but uh, when we played, it, it was a new thing. D&D &D was super new. I mean, it came out in the 70s. We were playing in the early 80s and you know, we did shit that there was no way. I, do any of you guys even know what Monty Hall means? Oh, I absolutely do. The Monty Hall problem. The door, door, you, if you don't want to zonk. Right. But it's for Monty Hall, it was, oh, I'm going to be sixth level and I'm going to own three spheres of annihilation and all this. So, I mean, it, when you don't. Oh, no, know, no. My, Monty Hall is let's make a deal. Right. <laughs> but it was everything you're hauling. Uh, oh, and when, oh, 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 oh. That's a, Oh, that, okay. It, yeah. It, it, it's an antiquated pun. I get it. Correct. It, it, it's a very <laughs> antiquated pun, and nobody really can get that anymore. But when I played, it was we don't know the rules. We'll make it up as we go along. This thing's called a guide for a reason. Okay, fair enough. We're going to befriend the hellhounds and turn them on the fire giants and <laughs> bake them, even though fire giants, you know, you can't burn them. Uh, but when when we were growing up, we would load up on oil and caltrops. And I don't think I've seen anybody uh, effectively use either one of those items in any of the games I DM. And I always well, wondered- there was, there was the beer in yes, the tomb. There, there was the beer in the tomb. Uh, but yeah, the oil, I, I often wonder why you know, maybe it's just considered. Everyone has dark vision nowadays. Everybody has dark vision, but you know what? If you're getting chased through the dungeon and you drop an oil flask, you're pretty much all set. You're going to get the bonus movement round, uh, and then just whoop, throw the torch over your head and bake everybody. Uh, so it's it's interesting to watch you guys play and think back. Oh, you know, my dice were made out of wood, and I ate dirt and all this. Um, <laughs> It's just kind of funny to watch, uh, and nobody carries a ten-foot pole. I mean, you you rarely see that reference anymore. When we started to play, you had a ten-foot pole because the jackass DM was putting a trap every four and a half feet, and you're just kind of chipping away. Uh, now, nobody has a ten-foot pole. Well, that was, kind of, that was kind of my. Uh, it, it's not even included in the Explorers pack anymore, but. Uh, that was kind of my motivation for like in the first episode where I'm like, okay, I want a minor illusion, some shit over there. Like I want to try and like, see if I can scare some shit up. Yeah. And flush them out of the woods. And uh, it, it's just fun. I mean, I'm not hacking on you guys. I think you guys do a great job. It's just kind of cool to think back. Okay. Well, how would I have done this as a player and how did these guys do it? I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. We can listen to Barbara Streisand's memories later. Uh, yeah, uh, Frankie Valley and, you know, uh, all those guys, jackass. Uh, how we look at uh, We filled up the hour. Uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and skip on the story time. Uh, folks, if you haven't watched either of the episodes or, uh, the ladies show in between the roles on Tuesday, highly recommend, uh, Hallie, you guys always get high marks. I don't know what it is. Um, uh, but everybody loves those shows. And I, I do not mind at all sitting back and watching. You guys do a terrific job. Say that uh, creepier, Frank. What? <laughs> Say that creepier, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like sitting in the dark room watching you guys. <laughs> with Blake. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm thinking of the scene in uh, the first Ted movie where the, uh, where the guy's dancing to the vi music video. Didn't see yeah, Ted. Yeah, that. that. 
Okay. So you guys know that one. I do not. No, no I have no clue. I so. haven't either. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> how how about Silence of, of the Lambs? Goodbye, horses. Uh, Silence of the Lambs when he's filming himself. That's, that's. I fuck me, I fuck me so hard. <laughs> 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 uh, true audiences only folks uh follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube channel tell your friends tell people you hate uh have them check us out if you got a question hit us up let us know uh if you want a seat at the table ask we will do our best for you uh, my lap is large enough for the whole world <sighs> Oh, if only I'd have technical difficulties. Final <laughs> thoughts, Blake. Uh, yeah, no, I, again, I think the takeaway that we're kind of coming to is, uh, you know, just again, I try and say it pretty much every one of these Tuesdays, be mindful of your group, be mindful of your table. Uh, just as long, try and have fun. Very good. Hallie, final thoughts. It, yeah, it, it's right along those same lines. If it's stressing you, it's not right. I mean, really, truly. This game is for fun, not yeah. not for headaches. Chris, round us out. Uh, definitely, uh, as Howley said, and it's we're we're all here to have fun. If you're not having fun, well, then obviously it's time to move on and or address the situation. Absolutely, uh, folks, take a look at Chris's miniatures. Uh, take a look at Howley's STD problem. Cut that one in. <laughs> <laughs> And just uh, take a look at Blake before he goes away to federal prison. <laughs> that's, that's not we I'm due for a vacation. <laughs> we appreciate your time. Uh, this Saturday, it's another one shot. Cast to be determined. A scenario to be determined. Uh, it's going to be loads of fun either way. Folks, thanks for joining us. Producer, take us out of here. <laughs>